in the First World War that uh, railways uh, came to the fore in terms of military strategy. The First World War happened at, in a way, just the wrong time in terms of transport technology, which therefore meant that the railways not only played a major role, but other transport modes were not able to uh, really uh, pick up the slack and enable a more efficient transport system. So the inadequacies of the railway, as well as their positive aspects, led to uh, what was the worst tragedy of the First World War, which was the stalemate on the Western Front, which essentially lasted from uh, the end of uh, 1914 uh, to uh, the middle of uh, uh, 1918 and uh, uh, cost basically uh, millions of lives in attempts uh, to break the deadlock. So the First World War started off with uh, a well-prepared uh, attack by uh, the Germans on uh, Belgium and then France. This was uh, dictated by the Schlieffen Plan which was a long worked out plan uh, by the Germans of how to uh, get to Paris uh, very quickly, the target was uh, 43 days, so that they could actually take over uh, France uh, in the west uh, before uh, Russia in the east would have had time to properly mobilize uh, an attack because the Germans knew that in attacking France uh, they were also attacking Russia because uh, they were involved in uh, the Entente Cordiale with uh, France, uh, Russia and the United Kingdom. They did not actually expect the United Kingdom to go into the war uh, so quickly, uh, but in fact uh, we did respond uh, very fast and played a role in the early stage of the war. The Schlieffen Plan didn't work, essentially because uh, it depended uh, not only on very efficient railway mobilisation, which did happen, but also on essentially the Belgians uh, giving up the ghost uh, and allowing the Germans to invade. Belgium was neutral and was not supposed to be attacked by uh, a, uh, the Germans, but the Germans completely ignored this, uh, charged into uh, Belgium very quickly, and then were surprised to find that the brave Belgians actually responded first of all by fighting to some extent, but most importantly by blowing up their railways, which actually slowed the uh, German uh, advance and was to, to make an absolutely huge difference to uh, the, the, what, what, was happening, what will happen next. This enabled the British to have enough time to uh, move into uh, northern France to send an expeditionary force and to link up uh, with the French and uh, the key moment was a counter-attack, the, the first battle of the Marne, where uh, the Germans were actually unable to reach Paris and were forced to begin to retreat. And what happened then was that there was a battle to the sea, um, where uh, northwards uh, towards the, the channel, with both sides actually being supplied through railways uh, on their respective uh, sides, and then the stalemate uh, emerging uh, that uh, would leave a front line that ran from the channel to uh, the border uh, with Switzerland and would remain essentially uh, the same until uh, the German breakthrough, only to find themselves uh, overwhelmed and forced to retreat uh, with uh, the war consequently ending in the Allied victory. Um, and. Once this stalemate emerged, uh, what happened was that uh, a whole system of small railways, what was called Fieldenbahnen by the Germans, who came well prepared for this, um, 60 centimetre uh, or two foot gauge uh, railways, which were then the essential way of supplying the front. The mainline railways had to be at least seven kilometres uh, behind the uh, the lines because uh, that was essentially the range of uh, the guns and 
you, they could not therefore uh, go any, anywhere nearer. So there were a series of railheads uh, developed uh, behind the lines on both sides, which then resulted in uh, the development of uh, the small railways, which were much more efficient at carrying both goods and people uh, to the front. These little railways were far more efficient at linking the railheads uh, with the trenches at the front uh, rather than uh, the alternatives which were horses and mules uh, or indeed just the soldiers themselves. Uh, so uh, these little railways became uh, the key uh, weapon in a way uh, in uh, keeping these uh, trenches uh, supplied. Uh, right through the war. The British had not come well prepared with this. The British had expected all the way through that this would be a mobile war, that you know, thanks to uh, modern technology uh, and indeed the railways, troops would be uh, going around, uh, moving around uh, much more quickly. But they didn't. Um, the, the war uh, became quickly entrenched precisely because of the state of transport technology at the time. Indeed, my father uh, drove a truck for uh, the Russian army at that time and told me about it uh, when I was a boy, about how uh, little uh, he could do. He could only drive about 50, 60 miles. Uh, there were need for constant repairs and so on. What's more, the roads were just not good enough. Uh, and uh, were mostly still mud roads, and particularly where the front uh, developed, uh, there were actually often no roads available. Uh, and in terms of aviation, yes, the, the, the Wright brothers had invented the, the aeroplane some uh, 11 years before the start of uh, the First World War, but uh, planes were still pretty crude instruments. They were fine for uh, maybe using as uh, spotter planes, uh, and very occasionally uh, they could uh, pass out a few bombs on top of enemy troops, but uh, essentially they were not uh, sufficiently developed to uh, provide anything like uh, a form of transport. So essentially it was the railways and to some extent horses and mules, and sometimes the two combined with the uh, uh, little railways being hauled by mules and, and horses, sometimes they were hauled by people, most often they were hauled by uh, locomotives, usually petrol, actually, locomotives, uh, but sometimes uh, steam locomotives. And the British uh, built quite an extensive uh, network of these uh, little railways, which were to play an absolute uh, vital part in uh, this conflict. And the mainline railways, of course, were also essential in uh, providing uh, transport for the troops, in providing uh, transport for uh, ammunition, and essentially were the form of logistics, uh, the main form of logistics uh, during the whole conflict. While researching the book, I spent a lot of time in the Imperial War Museum where there was uh, a couple of volumes uh, devoted to uh, the logistics of the war, and uh, these were something like 75, 80 percent uh, about railways and maybe uh, the rest was divided between uh, the other forms of transport including in fact canal boats and uh, aeroplanes and of course uh, lorries. So uh, railways were involved all the way through, they were involved in uh, ambulance trains where um, actually the Battle of the Somme for example when that uh, uh, broke out there was actually ambulance trains kind of waiting uh, there in the, in the morning for when uh, the uh, battle started and by that evening they managed to take the injured back to uh, Charing Cross uh, Hospital uh, which was in Charing Cross uh, by a ferry there were there were roll-on roll-off ferries which uh, took the uh, uh, coaches uh, for the ambulance train all the way back uh, directly to uh, the UK. So uh, again, the railways played an absolutely essential uh, part in that. And one of the odd contradictions of the uh, 
logistics of this war is that on the Eastern Front, where there were fewer railways, um, the war was actually more mobile because uh, precisely there weren't the uh, railways to enable uh, the uh, troops to be constantly supplied. The troops had to move around more and uh, the conflict, although it did eventually settle down into a front to some extent, was never entrenched uh, for years on end in the same way that the Western uh, Front was. Um, and uh, the uh, final end of the conflict uh, only came when uh, actually the American uh, troops, who also uh, were largely uh, came by rail from uh, the western ports uh, in, in, west of, in France, uh, they uh, arrived to reinforce the uh, very tired troops of uh, the English and French and various Commonwealth allies, and uh, eventually uh, the Germans, sensing that uh, once these troops arrived uh, in force, they would be uh, uh, overwhelmed, uh, attacked, broke through the front, uh, but only briefly, and then were uh, pushed back. Um, so, uh, uh, and, and that was the only time actually uh, the war became mobile rather than entrenched. So, the fantastic contradiction of the First World War is that, uh, that while uh, railways were supposed to provide mobility, uh, they actually uh, made uh, the, the, the war uh, into a stalemate. And there's a couple of um, interesting examples uh, wider afield of when of the use of the railways. Uh, one of them was to take uh, Lenin uh, through the lines in a uh, special train. The Germans uh, allowed him, he, Lenin had been exiled to Switzerland because of his uh, socialist uh, activities in uh, Russia, and he was uh, then transported through the lines, uh, through the German lines, to uh, St. Petersburg because the Germans thought, quite rightly, that if he managed to foment uh, revolution, then uh, the Russians might uh, pull out of the uh, uh, war, and that's uh, precisely what happened. So it was thanks to uh, Lenin's famous train uh, through uh, Eastern Europe that uh, the Russians eventually pulled out. And the other kind of incidental use, uh, involvement of the railways in uh, the First World War was the Hejaz Railway uh, in what is now uh, Saudi Arabia, which had been built uh, to uh, help pilgrims get to uh, Mecca, although it never actually quite reached Mecca, it only reached Medina, but uh, had only been completed at the beginning of the 20th century by the Ottoman Empire, which at the time was fighting against uh, the Allies. Um, and uh, Lawrence of Arabia, T. E. Lawrence, very famously uh, led a guerrilla warfare against the railway, always kind of blowing it up or, or uh, damaging it, but never destroying it entirely, so that uh, a lot of Turkish troops were tied up in the protection uh, of the railway, as one can see in that famous uh, Lawrence of Arabia uh, film. So um, wherever there was conflict uh, as part of the First World War, there was some railway uh, involvement and uh, you know, it is not an exaggeration to say that the whole way the First World War was waged and its outcome were uh, determined by uh, the uh, existence of the railways and their location.